like to introduce Chris Ronain to say a few remarks. Chris is the president of University Circle, Inc., and as these gardens are 100 years old, the best part about them is that they're not stagnant. They are changing, moving, progressing, and every year brings us some new adventure, and of course, uh, the adventure this year was that the Cleveland Cultural Gardens became a member of University Circle, Inc., and so we'd like to thank Chris for his uh, support and ask him to say a few remarks on this great occasion. Chris Romain. Thank you, Sheila, and congratulations. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I want to uh, bring greetings from University Circle, but I also want to compliment my friends, the Conwells, uh, for being parade marshals today. Very fitting. Our city and county council members, and to the mayor, who's tirelessly working on behalf of the city. Thank you, Mayor, for all you do for this city. This city, as the Cleveland Cavaliers have said this year, is all in. And uh, I think it's a fairly appropriate uh, phrase, uh, not just of a single season for our basketball team, but really for the city. Um, just a quick look back and then look forward. Um, I'm also happy to represent Holden Park's trust, which uh, our trust uh, proudly made a uh, donation of $50,000 to kick off the uh, Cultural Gardens um, stage here that will be the Centennial Plaza. So at, uh, I know there's a couple board members out here. I see Natalie Ronane and uh, others who uh, helped bring that to fruition. It was a no-brainer because this place is a, it really truly is the portrait of perseverance from this town. Uh, it's, a, it's really a portrait of the people that make up this town and uh, their progress. And just a little history lesson. A lot of the board members of Cleveland Cultural Gardens know this very well, but for the students, and it's particularly good to see our young people here today. You know, in 1897, of all ages, by the way, in 1897, John D. Rockefeller uh, did dedicate 250 acres that now is Rockefeller Park that bears his name. He thought there should be a place for respite in the city, a place to reflect, that parks brought that out in people, an opportunity to just reflect on what life's all about. And when he made this gift, um, we then really capitalized on this gift. In 1916, um, the British uh, brought forth the Poets Garden, the British Poets Garden, and that was uh, in honor of the 300th anniversary of the birth of William Shakespeare. The bust of Shakespeare is just up the hill, and as I said at the April uh, kickoff of the gala for this year, Shakespeare had a great line in the play Coriolanus, and he said, what of the city but its people? I think it's very fitting as we sit in Rockefeller Park in the Cultural Gardens today to reflect on exactly that, the diversity of the people of this great city. In fact, the great diversity of the people that make this city great. Well, in 1916, we landed the first garden. And there was a man in the audience by the name of Leo Weidenthal who took note of what could be. And he thought there should be a strand of gardens for the people. It took an, about another decade to bring forth the second garden, the Hebrew garden, and he really got something going. Later came uh, right after the German garden and the Italian garden, and 25 more gardens after that, Lithuanian right after that. I could start naming you all, but we grew to 29 gardens here uh, as we stand here today in our first 100 years. Fast forward to 1945. And a great idea was born, an idea that actually was recognized at the United Nations from Cleveland to have One World Day. One World Day was recognized by the UN, and it's a testament to Cleveland that we've kept it going for 71 years. Over those years, we continued to build more cultural gardens that you see out on Rockefeller Park and Martin Luther King Boulevard. And King himself visited this very boulevard that bears his name in the 1960s. It is all about the people, and ultimately, we keep growing gardens. The last decade has been a particularly good decade for the growth of gardens. A lot of you are here today who are representing gardens right now underway, seven of them, and seven more have taken interest. So we will, uh, right around the corner, there's a time capsule that's going to be planted, and this past June, Sheila and others uh, opened up on a very tough day, by the way, and I want to say one thing about why it was a tough day. It was the morning that we found out that Mayor, Governor, Senator George Voinovich had passed. It was a tough day to have a ceremony really looking toward our future on that day. But George Voinovich would be proud of all of you today. 
uh, he'd be proud of what he sees out here. So on that day, a uh, difficult day as it was, we brought a flag up that is the white flag between the United States flag and the city of Cleveland flag, and it really represents you. It's the Cleveland Cultural Gardens flag that was uh, brought up in its centennial. It really is the world's flag and the world right here in Cleveland. So we've had fun all summer with special events here in the gardens, uh, but today is a very special day. And I just want to say as a time capsule will be planted, uh, it really is a testament to the perseverance of you. It is the people out here who on every weekend come out and tend their gardens. It's the students like the students at Hawken who revitalize the American cultural gardens. It's people who just put their sweat equity into making this place the great place that it is. We've had the opportunity in the last few years to bring dignitaries like President Obama's HUD secretary up the boulevard and a representative from uh, one of our national news magazines came up the boulevard. And they all took note of what's happening down here, but they also took note of what's happening up the hill on East Boulevard and how this community is embracing its greatest asset in the cultural gardens. So as the time capsule gets planted to celebrate 100 years, and it will be reopened in 25 years, my hope is that there will be 50 cultural gardens by that time, and that these students, lest we forget, they'll be the ones that will open it. The young people will open it up, and my hope, and I'm sure our mayor and our council member and everybody else's hope, is that this city will continue to grow, that our population will grow again, that our population will grow because immigrants are growing in the city of Cleveland, as it's always been the factor of growth, and that we'll look back sometime in the 2040s at what we did today when we celebrated our first 100 years and the 71st anniversary of One World Day. We'll look back and we'll say we kept growing and we kept going together. Here's to you, Cleveland, for all you've done. We're just a part of it, Holden Parks Trust and University Circle. I'll end by saying I often get asked in University Circle, what's my favorite place? It's a pretty tough question because we have 40 wonderful education, medical, and arts and cultural organizations. But I look away from all of them and say they're all great. I look right down here and I say, if you want to have a really great day and really learn about what Cleveland's all about, take a stroll in the cultural gardens of Rockefeller Park. It's who we are. What of a city but the people. Thank you, people.